you go from, and this is the first time I'm ever hearing this real, is this real suicidal thoughts? Like, like legit? Mm -hmm. Or is it just a fleeting thought here and there? Mm, you know, there's nothing fleeting about Jonesy. It's always big. And in that moment, that was all I could see. That was all I could see was the best way to manage this because um, you don't, people like the outside world didn't know and you don't want to tell, not even just in the music business, but in, in, in life overall, you don't like to tell, give people personal information and show them when yep. you're in need. Yep. I don't know if that's a pride thing or if that's a smart thing because when you give the wrong people personal information, they can it can be used against you. But, and I didn't know how to tell people that I needed help. Actually, I did tell a few people. I remember reaching out to Mona Scott to see if there were any opportunities with that franchise, because I felt like Love & Hip Hop ain't really, ain't nothing but Jonesy in the morning. Mm -hmm. So there's gotta be a spot for me on one of those shows. And there was not, in hindsight, I'm glad <laughs> that I didn't, because yeah, that would, that would not have been a great fit for me at the time, but I panicked. And so I just was making an exit plan for myself. I'm so happy you share this because I, I can tell you, people see the public image. They see what's on the surface. What people don't see, you're human. Like, like all, you know, all of the people out there who you look at who are successful, you don't know what's going on. You don't know what's going on in their personal lives. You never and, do. Yeah, you don't know. And, and that feels so, uh, you know, and it's, it might not be the best analogy, but, but I'll throw it out there anyway. You know, I, I, I see people who are on social media and we all know that people really fine tune and they craft this image of everything is great. Mm -hmm. and especially for young women. They're it's the body. Instagram models and they have their, the perfect body. The titties and the it's stomach flat. is perfectly flat and the ass is perfectly round and the legs and then they're in the band-aid dresses at four o'clock in the afternoon with six, six inch heels on, hair is laid laces but baby hair popping all day long like all day long and and that's not that's not real life that might be a small portion of life but i'm gonna tell you i'm gonna tell you this that shit <clears throat> does not it's hard to keep up with that type of pressure because if you're really trying to be present to your life real life ain't a band-aid dress and six inch heels every day and cocktails at four it's Woo! just not. And if that is, you need to reevaluate your life because there's something else you could be doing. I want to touch on something because we kind of moved past it. Mm -hmm. For me, you know what made it extra hard for me to reach out for help is that I was such a bitch when I was on radio, unnecessarily mean to people sometimes, um, but enough that that became part of my makeup. Yeah. That she's this... So how does this tough shit talking chick that was at the top of the radio chain in not just one market, two markets. I was on, in New York and Philly at the same time. She needs help. Oh, fuck that. Now was our time to, you know what I mean? So I kind of made my bed. I made my bed and I knew, I said, you know what? This serves me right. This is what the fuck I get for being extra because you was so busy trying to chase a check or you were so busy trying to beat star in the ratings and it just it was the 12 years off gave me time and, and I could have made excuses for it enough gave me time to break myself the fuck down like I had been breaking people down that came through my morning show I got a taste of my own shit and I had to be big woman put on big girl panties and suffer. And, and after I suffered and I stopped beating up on myself because I beat up on myself a lot, I actually reached out to the people that I felt I had hurt the most during those radio years. And really? I apologize. Oh yeah, oh yeah. 
because I'm like, all right, you're silently apologetic. The fuck? You put everybody else's shit out there. You got to put your apology and your sorrow out there too. And then I said, but Tarsha, don't expect people to be so forgiving. But know that you did your part and you put the apology out there. So for the most part, I, I think that's where the whole Miss Jones reunion apology tour came from. Yep. But even before that, I was reaching out to people. I think there's only one more person that I haven't been able to contact um, I can't even say I've really, really tried because I don't even know how to start that I need to give a huge apology to. Mm-hmm. And once I do that, I'll feel like I did as much as I could and God and 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 God under, God will forgive if he hasn't already. No, I, I, I am I am quite <laughs> sure that God has forgiven. Um Jonesy, this you know. This conversation, I, people need to hear this. This is redemption. This is your past. Your past. Like sometimes God is going to sit you down. Sometimes God is going to break you down. But look at what came out on the other side. Like, like really, like the, having this conversation that's so honest and forthcoming and you having the, 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 the clarity of thought and vision and understand that, okay, I'm going through this. And part of my healing, I gotta, I hurt people. I hurt a lot of people. <laughs> I hurt a lot of people unnecessarily. Like, I feel like when God gives you that level of a platform, you have to be responsible with it. And not only did I hurt people by saying things that were maybe not true, exaggerated, maybe were true, but didn't need to be said to the world or they hadn't told their truth themselves yet. But, you know, we're always pushing to get that first story and that exclusive. But even by, by using that platform to bring soothsayers and prophets you're not supposed to do that. You ain't supposed to be believing in nobody but God. You ain't supposed to be. Now, I, I believe there are people with the gift. Mm-hmm. I know my discernment with that is off because look at the niggas I had kids with. So, <laughs> so I also brought soothsaying by bringing psychics on my show, which that at the time, I didn't realize I was doing damage. But in that time I was home and my health is breaking down and you have no, no, nothing nothing but time on your hands to say, why am I here? What's the higher meaning? Bitch, because you did all this stuff. Now, I will say this. Upon my return, I have felt the other side of a lot of the things that I did for people that I took for granted that I didn't realize was good, was grand. And these people are reminding me now, you don't remember in 19 such and such, me and my sister were singing on the street and you bought us this or you did, it's so everywhere I turn, I'm like, yes, I knew I wasn't that mean of a bitch. I just, you know, had a rough patch and was scrambling, but I knew I was, I was that artist that I always put the people first. Part of the reason why I talked the way I did on air is because I wanted the people to not feel like artists are on this pedestal. They are just as human as us. Don't be bowing down to an artist because they got a hot record. That was part of the reason that fueled my anti artistness maybe. But in that, I was, I was, I told you everything with Jonesy is big. It's either big, good, or big, bad. So are the lessons and the outcomes. So now I'm seeing the people whose lives I touched for good, whose careers I've helped launch, people that they themselves may or may not remember, but I'm being reminded now. I gave Stephen A. Smith his first shot on radio. You know, I remember Stephen A. <laughs> being on your your platform, mm-hmm. like like when he was a young when before anybody knew him to be this big guy on ESPN. Yeah. Yeah. I remember Donnell Rawlings. Yeah, on your show, like you really ushered in 
some some major talent out there. I did a lot without even knowing what they would be. Just because I had the platform, they wanted an opportunity. I felt they had something to offer to the audience. I didn't ask for kickbacks. I didn't ask for, oh, but put me on your song. I didn't. I did a lot of stuff. So I'm so grateful that to counter that bad portion, at least I was still pouring into people because people remember and people will let you know, be it good or bad, if you fuck them around or if you help change their life. So I put a lot of good out too, but that, you know, that bad, that bad stuff. I, I only be focusing on the bad. Like I got to still fix stuff, Prez. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.